In this video, we're going to talk about vector spaces. I'm going to define what a vector space is, and then we'll look at some examples. So a vector space is a non-empty set V of objects, which we call vectors, with two operations, vector addition and scalar multiplication. And it has to satisfy the following conditions. The first condition is closed under vector addition. This means that if I have any two vectors in my set V, let's call them U and W, two objects in my set V, then their sum U plus W is also in my set V. Property two says vector addition is commutative. That means it doesn't matter which order I add things in. So U plus W is the same as W plus U for any choice of U and W in my set V. Property three says that vector addition is associative. That means if I have a sum of three vectors and I first add U and V and then add W, that's the same as adding U to the sum of V plus W. Property four says there is a zero vector in V. That means I have some special object, which I label as the zero vector, such that whenever I take any other object in V, let's call that U, and I add the zero vector to it, I end up with U again. Property five says there are additive inverses in V. That means for any object U in V, there exists another object, which we'll call W, so that their sum u plus w gives me the zero vector. And we typically label w as negative u. Property six says that my set v is closed under scalar multiplication. Remember that for us, scalars are just real numbers. So closed under scalar multiplication means that if I have any scalar c and any object u, in my set V, then the scalar multiplication C times U is an object in my set V. Property seven is the distributive property, and there are two versions here. If I have a scalar C and I multiply it with the sum of vectors U and W, then the scalar C distributes to give me C times U plus C times W. In the second version, if I have two scalars and I add them together, C plus D, and I multiply it with the vector U, then the U distributes to give me C times U plus D times U. Property eight says that scalar multiplication is associative, meaning that if I have a scalar C and I multiply it to a vector D times U, that's the same as if I had multiplied the scalars C and D together first and then multiplied by the vector U. Property nine says that the scalar one is the multiplicative identity. That means that if I have any object U in my set V, the product one times U gives me U again. So a vector space is just a collection of objects with two operations that satisfies all of these conditions. Let's look at some examples of vector spaces. The one that we're probably most familiar with is R2, the collection of two-dimensional vectors with entries in R. What I'm writing here is just a set notation for R2. Now we've defined two operations on R2 before, vector addition and scalar multiplication. For vector addition, if I have a vector u1 and u2, and I add it to a vector w1 and w2, then their sum is just a two-dimensional vector with top entry u1 plus w1 and bottom entry u2 plus w2. For scalar multiplication, if I have some scalar c and I multiply it to a vector u1 plus u2, then the product is just c times u1 and c times u2. It turns out that R2, with these two operations, is a vector space. However, to confirm this, it's actually a bit tedious because we have to check that it satisfies all of the properties that we mentioned before. Let's try to go through these properties to convince ourselves. 
one. Is it closed under addition? If I have a pair of two-dimensional vectors and I add them together, is the result a two-dimensional vector? Well, the answer is yes. So it's closed under addition. For property two, we want to check that addition is commutative. To see this, let's add two arbitrary vectors in R2. Let's say I have u1, u2 plus w1, w2. Their sum would have u1 plus w1 in the first entry, u2 plus w2 in the second entry. Now, because addition is commutative in real numbers, the first entry can be rewritten as w1 plus u1, and the second entry can be written as w2 plus u2. Then, separating the vectors, we can write this as w1, w2 plus u1, u2. Since u1, u2 plus w1, w2 is the same as w1, w2 plus u1, u2, we can conclude that addition is commutative. Next, we want to check that addition is associative. We have associativity because addition is associative with the real numbers. The reasoning can be seen here. We use the fact that addition is associative with the real numbers at this step. And since the left-hand side of this equation is equal to the right-hand side of this equation, we can conclude that addition is associative. As you can see, sometimes checking these properties can be a bit tedious. Let's continue checking our properties. Property 4 says that there is a zero vector in our set. In our case, the zero vector is the vector 0, 0. Notice that if I take any arbitrary u1, u2, and I add the zero vector to it, I just end up with u1, u2. So the vector 0, 0 fulfills the role of the zero vector. Property 5 says that there are additive inverses. If I take an arbitrary vector u1, u2, then the additive inverse to it is the vector negative u1, negative u2. Because if I add these two vectors together, I end up with u1 minus u1, u2 minus u2, which is the zero vector. Property 6 says that the set is closed under scalar multiplication. This property is true because if I take a scalar and I multiply it to a two-dimensional vector, the result is a two-dimensional vector. Next, we have the distributive property. This property is true because the real numbers have the distributive property. The reasoning can be seen here. In property 8, we'll show that scalar multiplication is associative. The details of which can be seen here. Again, it boils down to the fact that multiplication is associative with the real numbers. The last property that we have to check is that the scalar 1 is the multiplicative identity. If I take 1 and I multiply it to any arbitrary vector, u1, u2, the product is 1 times u1, 1 times u2, which is just the original vector u1, u2. So 1 is indeed the multiplicative identity. So since R2 satisfies all of these conditions, we can conclude that R2 is a vector space. Again, because there are so many properties that you need to check, it's usually really tedious to check that a set is a vector space. But this is something that's probably good to see once in your life. Some of the other examples that I'll be giving, you'll just have to take my word that it's a vector space. If you want, you can go through and check all of the properties for the examples that I will give. It's important to note that the operations vector addition and scalar multiplication play a role in deciding whether something is a vector space or not. For example, let's take R2 again. But instead of using the normal vector addition, I'm going to define vector addition as follows. If I have the vector a, b, and I add it to the vector c, d, let's say that what I'll do is add these entries together to get the first component and add these entries to get the second component. So the way I'm defining the sum of the vectors a, b, and c, d 
is the vector a plus d as the first component, b plus c as the second component. And let's use our normal scalar multiplication. If I have the scalar c and I multiply it to u1, u2, I'm looking at cu1, cu2. So with these new operations, we will see that R2 is not a vector space. In particular, we don't have the commutative property for addition. For example, let's take the vector 1, 2 and add it to the vector 2, 1. The way we're defining our vector addition, the result here is 1 plus 1 for the first component, 2 plus 2 for the second component, which gives me the vector 2, 4. If I had added the vectors the other way around, take 2, 1 and add it to 1, 2, the result would be 2 plus 2 for the first component and 1 plus 1 for the second component, giving me the vector 4, 2. Since these vectors are not the same, we can say that addition is not commutative. And so R2, with these operations, is not a vector space. Let's look at another example with R2. This time, let's take the original vector addition, a, b, plus c, d, is a plus c, b plus d. So our normal vector addition. But this time, let's say my scalar multiplication is as follows. If I take the scalar c, and I multiply it to a vector u1, u2. Let's say that what I do is I do u1 to the power of c, u2 to the power of c. This time, the distributive property is not satisfied. For example, if I take 2 times the sum of the vectors 1, 2, plus 3, 4, then if I first add the vectors together, I get 2 times the vector 4, 6, which with the new scalar multiplication gives me 4 to the power of 2, 6 to the power of 2, which is 1636. On the other hand, if I computed 2 times 1, 2 plus 2 times 3, 4, then the resulting vector would be 1 squared, 2 squared, plus 3 squared, 4 squared, or the vector 1, 4, plus 9, 16, which is 10, 20. So what we see is that the distributive property doesn't hold because these two quantities aren't the same. So again, we would have to conclude that R2 is not a vector space with these operations. Let's look at examples of things that are vector spaces. For example, the collection of all n-dimensional vectors, Rn, is a vector space with our normal vector addition and scalar multiplication. Another example is the set of all polynomials of degree at most 2. So these are things of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are all real numbers. Our vector addition is just adding polynomials. For example, if I have a1x squared plus b1x plus c1, and I add it to a2x squared plus b2x plus c2, then the sum is a1 plus a2 x squared plus b1 plus b2 x plus c1 plus c2. And our scalar multiplication is if I have some scalar k and I multiply it to a polynomial a x squared plus b x plus c, then I just have k a x squared plus k b x plus k c. So with these operations, the set of polynomials with degree at most 2 is a vector space. Again, you can check the properties if you like. In fact, the set of all 
polynomials is also a vector space, where the vector addition is just the sum of polynomials and scalar multiplication is just multiplying the whole polynomial by some scalar. On the other hand, the set of polynomials of degree exactly 2 is not a vector space. The reason is it's not closed under addition. For example, if I have the polynomial x squared plus 3x plus 1 and I add it to the polynomial negative x squared plus 2x minus 3, then the resulting sum is 5x minus 2. And this here is not a degree 2 polynomial. So the set of polynomials of degree exactly 2 is not closed under addition, which means it's not a vector space. One last example I'll give is the set of points on the xy plane. So as a set, I can write them as the set of points x, y, where x and y are real numbers. So the vector addition would be defined as follows. If I have two points a, b, and c, d, then their sum is a plus c, b plus d. And for scalar multiplication, if I have k times a point a, b, then the scalar multiplication is ka, kb. With these operations, the set of points on the xy plane is a vector space. So with these examples, you can see that things that you don't traditionally think of as vectors, like points and polynomials, can be thought of as vectors. In the next video, we'll look at vector subspaces.